All right, we are here with JC Crown. JC Crown. Brandon from BitTips, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. So could you tell us a little bit about why you're here at the conference and, and who you're representing? Sure, I mean, I'm here because it's one of the biggest conferences of the year. I'm a big Bitcoin guy, I love the space. Uh, I do a lot in the space, I mean, I'm very passionate. I actually, I like to use crypto, not just, uh, you know, hold or sort of talk about it. But um, So I work for Loki.io, it's a patent and IP uh, company. Okay. We facilitate uh, searching, we have all kinds of patent tools for inventors. It's, uh, it's an amazing product. It's uh, been out for over a year now. It's um, lokisearch.com, L-O-C-I. -I. I also own a consulting company. Uh, I've worked for I'm, uh, business development for HyperQuant. It's a fintech platform. They do automated trading, market making. Okay. Um, there's a few others that I've that I've worked with. That's very cool. So, what are you most excited for in crypt for crypto and blockchain in 2019? Oh wow! Um, I think 2019 we're going to start seeing a lot more uh, front end stuff for consumers for mainstream uh, like onboarding. Um, I think Lightning Network is going to be great. Um, we already have cool wallets like Eclair that work pretty well. I think it's like this close. Um, so I feel like uh, you know we're 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 getting to the point almost, and I hope we'll be there by the end of the year, where devs can just implement uh, crypto payments in their software seamlessly, effortlessly, and users will have the the um, uh, the ease the ease the, the of knowledge using it. kind of you know they'll they'll be familiar enough with the ecosystem to kind of you know like email when right. email was new. You think of email as like an easy no-brainer now, but right. it took a learning curve. Absolutely, yeah. Like, even though it is easy, even the easy parts take a little bit of a learning curve. So, uh, you know, we got to get over that hump. Right. A lot of these projects that raised in 2017 and, and in 2018, uh, you know, they were making things for people who aren't there yet. Yeah. Uh, like Webvan. Webvan was awesome. It's basically Amazon Fresh. Actually, Webvan is Amazon Fresh now. They actually bought it. Right. Uh, so, it so it's still it around. Acquired, but. Yeah. But uh, I mean, it was a great idea. Who doesn't want to go online and get your groceries delivered to you? It's awesome. But there weren't enough people online. Like there weren't enough people that use the internet every day. Right. Uh, and so it failed. And so I think it's what we're seeing with a lot of ICOs now. Right. Um, but, but the ones that are responsible with their, with their treasury, hopefully will still be around in a couple of years and uh, have some great tech for us. Until the SEC shuts them all down. Hope, hopefully that doesn't happen. <laughs> for, uh, for illegal securities uh, offerings, but. Hopefully that doesn't happen. Uh, some of them it will, but you know they're. Oh they're, yeah, well some are, of them probably deserve it. Right, and there are definitely some legitimate ICOs that are really trying to push real blockchain products for for the masses, um, and that's definitely what we're seeing here at the conference is a lo is a lot of people uh, looking for ways to bring the mass consumers into blockchain. You know, how can we how can we make it so simple that you don't even know you're using blockchain? Right. So, exactly. And there's a few I've seen in development that aren't really uh, ready yet. Dollars.com is one. Uh, I don't know if they're going to go forward or not, but they have a great plan for like a prepaid card. It's normal, you know, like a Visa, 5% cash back type thing, but it uses crypto. Yeah. But the average consumer that uses this, as far as they're concerned, it's a prepaid card on their phone that gives them cash back. Yeah. Uh, which, of course, who doesn't like that? If right. it's easy to get on, it's free cash back. Yeah. And, um, and that, that, that is... For sure, how I how I personally see the crypto space going, because if, if we're if we're constantly having to learn how to use an exchange and learn how to, to buy things, learn how to store our private keys, and we don't just have like an app that makes it all you know simple sim simplified for us, then uh, it's not going to appeal to the masses, and you know the old technology won't get replaced overnight, but it'll it'll definitely get replaced over time. Right. We're building great networks now. We're building really great infrastructure today. That's what we've been doing for the last many years. Absolutely. And and that infrastructure is solid. Uh, a lot of the, the protocol behind, for example, Lightning Network, uh, I'm actually a fan of EOS as well. I think it's a great solution for enterprise. I know it gets a lot of, uh, of uh, negativity, but I, I, I really, um, I think they have a great solution. Half a second block times. Uh, you know, it's pros and cons. So Bitcoin, I love, it's a machine. It doesn't care about politics, you can trust it. Right. It does exactly what it does. EOS has human governance. That has its own set of problems, right? right? But it also gets, uh, that's why you're able to have, you know, such a quick and free network. Mm -hmm. And also they can respond faster yeah. to issues that arise, because it's humans. Yeah. Now, I wouldn't trust uh, 
human governance as like my life savings, but I would trust it for an ecosystem of decentralized applications for enterprise. Right. Uh, actually, it's better because if there was a DAO hack like with Ethereum, mm -hmm. they could reverse it. Yeah. I mean, it's unpopular in the blockchain world because we like our immutability, and it's still technically immutable because they don't pretend like it didn't happen. They just have means of protecting right. people. Like, right, and uh, absolutely, you know, as as we kind of centralize the the actual use of cryptocurrency. So, for example, if we're using an app that that centralizes all of our crypto assets in one place, there is some some bit of a of a drawback there, you know, because the whole point of, of this is that we're using decentralized assets that are completely indiscriminate of who's using them. Uh, but at the same token, there are certain benefits to having some level of centralization, and we're seeing that with like with Ripple, for example. It's just more intelligent governance, or it's human governance. Yeah, humans aren't perfect, but we're smart. And, and we're building that ecosystem that eventually, hopefully, we, we won't need humans interfering, or at least to a very minimal degree. Yeah. Or maybe we'll finally figure out a way where, where we can't uh, corrupt ourselves. Uh, <laughs> I doubt that'll happen, but yeah. we'll see. Yeah, it'll be nice. Thank That's you, great. Jason. Appreciate it. it.